Jordan Poole and Draymond Green. Man, what in tarnation is What the heck is going What in the what? Listen to me. First of all, I know what happened. I don't know what happened. But I know what happened. Okay? I know what happened. At the same time, I don't know what happened. But listen, let me tell you what happened. Let me tell you what happened. First and foremost, Jordan Poole. Man, you the most light-skinned dude. You the most light-skinned dude. You the most light-skinned dude in the whole wide world. Boy, what is wrong with you, man? You don't let nobody just walk up on you like that. And what kind of push was that? Have you ever been in a fight? Like, are you joking? You don't let no dark skins like Draymond Country Green. That babbit walked up on you, boy. You should you, you should have squared off of a race. You should you should you should have flinched him. You should have been like, hey, what you walking up on? That little push, don't you understand force and counter force? That push caused Draymond. And let me tell you something about Draymond. Draymond got them hands, because that right hand came out like fire pow! I was like, ooh, Draymond got hands. Draymond, Draymond caught you with the fire. Pow pow! <laughs> You the most light skinned dude in the whole wide world, Luca <laughs> Jordan Poole. You really are. You really are. But and 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 you making Matt Barnes look bad, man. Come on, man. You make Matt Barnes be like light skinned guys, man. Always making me look bad. You know what I'm saying, Matt? I think you need to just you need to go out there and just help him. Like help all these light skins. Go out there. Go out there and like teach just griminess. Just just how to be a thug. I don't know what you got to teach them. <laughs> Ah, okay, all the tops, all the topics now. Number one, this is not a big deal. Okay, this is not a big deal. It's not a big deal. Teams do this all the time. TMZ hasn't been around forever, but there's always been fights. Guys fight all the time. It's not a big deal. It's not. It's really not a big deal. Okay. Let me. So, but let's go in line of all the things that you guys are thinking and all the things that you think are appropriate. Is Draymond Green a bully? No. He's the enforcer of the team. He's That's his job. His job is to punch somebody in the damn face every now and then. That's his job. Just keep guys, keep guys ready to go and be like, listen, Jordan Poole was probably, who knows, maybe he wasn't focused, maybe maybe Draymond was trying to get something into his head and he was, he was ignoring him. And Jordan Poole was a nice basketball player. He's a better basketball player than Draymond Green, but Draymond doesn't have Jordan Poole's responsibilities. Draymond doesn't have to do what Jordan Poole has to do on a basketball court to be in the NBA. That's not his responsibility. What's his responsibility? To slap a dude in the face every now and then. That's it. On his team and the other team. That's what Draymond's job is. His job is to be Draymond Green. Somebody said, so I think, was it Kevin Hart? Said the blackest name in the history of the world was Draymond Green. That is, a, that is, that is the biggest Negro name in the history of the world. His name is to be the biggest Negro on his team. And he's doing it. He's doing a good job, too. Shucks. So every now and then you need a dude. You need a Charles Oakley type. You need a Rick Mahorn. You think Rick Mahorn was in the doggone NBA because he's got super, super Rick Mahorn skills? You need, every now and then you need a Bill Lambeer. You need dudes like that. You need dudes like that, okay? A guy that every now and then got to punch somebody in the doggone face. Hey, and all you little sissies running around there talking about Draymond's out of pocket and Draymond, he didn't commit murder. He just punched dude in the face. Every now and then, men get punched in the face. Well, some men. Some men do the punching. Some men get punched. That's, that's, that's life, baby. That's life. And when you boil it down to these real manly sports like basketball, football, hockey, them kind of sports that, you know, are, are untouched by this softy softiness of these current day beta males, a dude gets punched in the face every now and then. That's just what it is. That's just what it is. Now I heard I, the, the aftermath. Jordan Poole finished the practice. He wasn't knocked out. He just got punched in the face. Like, you know what? People who play hockey must be looking at you guys like, what's wrong with these people? <laughs> like, what's, what's, the, what's the big deal? 
It's a punch in the face. Like, what? Like, we walk around with no front teeth. You basketball players all got your teeth and everything. Like, geez, they let us fight. That's part of the game. The only reason that you are so sensitive, all you little sensitive Negroes, all you little sensitive uh, viewers, is because it's big black guys fight. That's it. That's what makes y'all scared. That's why they invented the UFC. <laughs> you know that? They invented the UFC so that they could recreate the myth of tough white guys. <laughs> I used to watch Chuck Liddell. I used to watch Chuck Liddell lock people up. I'd be like, I would beat the hell out of some Chuck Liddell. At the Iceman. As soon as Iceman came against a, a real man, they knocked the hell out of the Iceman. Come on, man. Soon, soon, what was his name? Brother, brother who what? Um, uh, Rampage. As soon as Rampage got, got a hold of Chuck Liddell, there was no more Iceman talk. It melted the ice. Come on, man. Listen, the only reason you guys are all, all choked up and offended it's because it's big black guys fighting. The NBA, brothers used to fight in the NBA. That's when the NBA was good. I used to like it. I remember when when when, when Julius Irving and Larry Bird squared off. That was Julius's only fight. Larry got in a lot of them. But Larry, I think Larry would have whooped his butt, <laughs> to be honest. Larry's six foot 10, 250 pounds. Julius about six foot six. I, I think Julius, you're outmatched. Although you, you snuck him a good one. You got in there, but I think you didn't let Larry go. You might've been in trouble. But yeah, NBA used to be like that. That's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Leave them boys alone. Them boys are figuring out their situation. Jordan Poole probably had to be put back in his place. Had to be put back in his place with a punch in the face. He didn't punch Steph in the face. He didn't punch, he didn't punch Clay in the face. He punched Jordan Poole in the face. That boy probably needed a punch in the doggone face. It's okay. Nothing wrong with it. He apologized to the team. When everybody, everybody's listen, they're probably hanging out at each other's house right now. Be like, boy, you ever, you ever try that again? You know I'm gonna whoop you. Oh, Yo, you try, you try, you try. Come on, man. These guys, these guys. This is a boys' club, man. This is a boys' club. That's what they do. You know me, you know, my friends. I've been fighting and stuff during basketball. No big deal. No big deal. Still a story. It's not, I won't say it's a non-story. But it's no big deal, man. It's no big deal. Let's go on to the next order of business. Um, some of you are like, oh, you know, they're going to have to make a decision, you know, to get rid of Draymond and to keep Jordan Poole. Let me tell you something right now, okay? And I said it already. Jordan Poole is a better basketball player than Draymond Green. I already said it. But the Golden State Warriors would never get rid of Draymond Green to keep Jordan Poole. I'll tell you why. Because when you got a bicycle, when you got a bicycle, you don't need three wheels. You need two wheels, some handlebars, a horn, you know what I'm saying, a seat. You don't need three wheels. Jordan Poole is the third wheel. He really is, he's the third wheel. And there's a clay and there's a staff, okay? And Jordan Poole is the third wheel of that and he always will be. But you don't got a lot, you don't got a Draymond. You need a Draymond and Draymond is more valuable to the Golden State Warriors than Jordan Poole, as long as Steph and and and, uh, and Clay are healthy now. Draymond Green, the utility knife, Mister Do Everything, the enforcer, two hundred and twenty-five pounds. <laughs> Draymond Green ain't about ain't about two a buck two hundred and twenty-five pounds, but he's a, he's a tough dude. He's a tough dude. He got hands. You can see that today. Got hands. He ain't afraid of he ain't afraid to talk nobody down. He ain't afraid to throw a couple of bows. That's Draymond Green. Period. He ain't a better basketball player, but don't don't ever think. Don't ever think that the Golden State Warriors don't know what side of the bread is buttered. They don't they don't they am not gonna break up Draymond, Clay, and Steph. That's not breaking up. To throw in Jordan Poole? Nah, buddy. It's not gonna happen. Jordan Poole can't do what Draymond does, and Draymond can't do what Jordan Poole does, but there's already guys in that team who can do what Jordan Poole does. So, for you guys thinking that they're gonna get rid of Draymond for Jordan Poole, you got another thing coming, because championship teams understand the kind of personalities, the people, and the grit that's needed to get all the way to a championship, and Draymond has been there the whole ride. You're not getting rid of 
Ray to shame on me for Jordan Poole. So if you think that's what's going to happen out of a punch in the face, it ain't going to happen. Period. And I bet you, I bet you, I bet you, I double dog dare you and bet you, I bet you you're not going to hear no more about it because TMZ released this thing. I wonder how them jokers got into it. The TMZ probably never going to be allowed in another Golden State Warriors practice. I wonder how that got released. But I bet you the Golden State Warriors ain't going to make the mistake of Boston and start having stupid ass press conferences to talk about inter inter, inter team discipline. It's none of your business. Teammates. People get punched in the doggone face and a lot of times it makes you a better team makes you a better team. I remember when Charles Barkley got mad at Manute Bull. And he went, he went, he tried to go attack that Dinka, that Dinka warrior. <laughs> Try to punch Manute in the face. Manute wasn't going for it though. I remember that back in the day. Manute Bull and Charles Barkley had a fight. Yeah, Charles was like, okay, that's, that's, that's more African than I thought. <laughs> that's a whole lot of African up in there. You remember that. Come on, man. So teammates used to do that all the time, man. Back in the old days, Dudes would go back to their cars and come back with guns. Like they were, they were not joking. You don't get in a fight with certain dudes because they weren't playing. They were not playing. That's why they had to clean up the NBA because it was, it really was a thug league. Used to be a lot of thugs in the NBA, a whole lot of thugs in the NBA. Teams would hire enforcers just like they used to do in hockey. You'd have a guy. That's what I'm talking about. Mason from the Knicks, Oakley. Those guys didn't have a whole lot of basketball skills. But you, you came to the Knicks, you came to play the Knicks, Michael, and all you little guys, listen, you're gonna get your butt, you're gonna get your butt hit, you're gonna get your butt worked out. Xavier Daniels, remember him? Xavier, X-Man. Boy, those guys came to fight. Terry Cummings came to fight. You, you, you don't play with those guys. Those are some big old thugs. They can play some basketball too. But they came to fight, and the names, I got a, I got a whole bunch of names of dudes that you didn't play with. John Lucas? You don't play with those guys. John Lucas just wait for you and karate chop you to the throat, man. Those men came to fight. That's why they're on the team. Big, six foot nine, six foot ten dudes who can fight. <laughs> they don't got those kind of guys no more. Too bad. Draymond Green is a throwback. Throwback. That's a real man. Leave that man alone. Because every now and then, a dude need a punch in the doggone face. And and Jordan Poole, you too light-skinned. You let, Don't ever let nobody walk up on you like that and don't lift up your hands. What is this chest-to-chest -chest stuff? Are you dumb? And then you want to you wanna push him? You should have snuck him. You should have snuck him, dummy. Dude walk up on you like that. You don't, you don't push him off. Where are you from? The suburbs? <laughs> you snaked up, boy. Be like, who you barking up? Bam! Give him a little, little, little left cross, man. They haven't taught you how to box or something. Come on, man. <laughs> Draymond was like, what? Who are you pushing, boy? Who you think this is? I'm the big dog in here. What up? That's how we're supposed to work. And guess what? Bet you Jordan Poole never got to get out of pocket again the rest of the year. <laughs> I bet you he don't. I bet you, you don't. Listen, I don't know. I don't know what you guys are saying online. I really haven't listened to a lot of it. I saw the TMZ footage, and you know, it was clear that there was some chirping going on in the background. And you know, Draymond walked up on him like, "Yo, you hear what I'm saying, bro? Like, you hear what I'm saying?" And Jordan Poole did the whole, "Man, get off me, man." Nah, buddy. Nah, you don't got that. You should you should have said yes, sir. <laughs> That's what you should have said. You should have said, man, I got you, man. Just relax. Just take it easy. That's what you should have said. You don't push big dogs and you can't handle yourself. Jordan Poole. <laughs> Every now and then a dude needs a punch in the face. And luckily for me in my life, I've been doing most of the punching and the receiving. But I will tell you one story from when I was little. I was in grade seven, coming up as a young basketball star. I was a point guard, and I had a big guy on my team, man. This kid, his name was John Arthwery. John Arthwery, I don't know what happened to him. I don't know. I, his pituitary gland exploded or something. But in grade eight, he was in grade eight, I was in grade seven. John Arthwery is six foot four. 
Duncan, all kind of stuff. I, I used to throw John Arthur Wary alley oops. Remember, I'm, a, I'm about. I was tall for my age too, but I wasn't six foot four. I was about five foot nine in grade seven, right? So, you know, I'm acting tough because I can fight. I'm from the hood. I can fight. I can't fight big ass John Arthur So one day, John Arthur he's one of those kids too. I think he was held back a few times. I made the mistake. When Arthur Wary couldn't spell some kind of simple word, I said, man, you a dummy, boy. <laughs> you a dummy. Arthur Wary, this face changed, man. His face changed on him. <laughs> the boy's face just changed on Man, I was leaving after class. Somebody just grabbed me from behind, picked me out, slapped me against the backboard. I said, don't you ever call me stupid again. I was like, damn, okay, Joe. <laughs> I didn't know that that country bumpkin was so strong. He picked me up right off the ground, man. Held me to the to the chalkboard. I was like, "Holy smoke!" I, I never called John Arthur stupid. <laughs> that was the only, and I can't call that a fight because I wasn't going to fight, and I would I would have taken an L for sure. That was the only fight I think in my life that I ever lost in three years, from grade seven to grade ten. John Arthur was still six foot four, about 175 pounds, and I was six foot seven, 215 pounds. And when I walked up on John Arthur the next time, you know what I said? Hey, John. <laughs> I didn't say nothing. <laughs> because I remember when he held me by the throat when I was a great seven. I didn't say nothing to that man. I was bigger than him. I was a much bigger man than him. But I remembered, put me in my place when I was a great seven. So I didn't touch him. <laughs> I didn't do nothing to him. God bless you. I don't know where you are now, John Arthur, but that's a heck of a story. Greatest, greatest center in, in, in middle school of, of, of in history in Toronto. John Arthur. Anyway, that's my time. This is the real spiel. Del K. Brereton. It's a non-story, people. Every now and then somebody gets a punch in the face, and most of the time they deserve it. Jordan Poole, you need to be less light-skinned. Be like Matt Barnes. Matt Barnes is the darkest skin, light skin guy. <laughs> he light skin, but he dark skin, boy. You don't let nobody walk up on you like that, Jordan Poole, man. What the heck is wrong with you, man? You gotta get some boxing lessons. Jeez. But I bet you never smack talk J. Mon Green again. <laughs> it's not a story, people. Go say Warriors. Can't wait. I can't wait to catch you guys in the finals. I want the title. I want to take it from the best. Talk to you guys soon. It's Del K. Brereton, the real spiel. Hey, all you light skins, keep ducking, baby. <laughs> oh, man. If you're sensitive, you're on the wrong doggone channel.